Hi, it's Handy Andy Tech Tips here, and today I'm going to tell you how to use dynamic data masking in SQL Server 2016. Now this is actually a brand new feature, and what it can do is automatically obfuscate data in your tables. It's intended to be a security feature, so instead of completely locking off access to all the data in a particular object for less privileged users, its owner can choose to show some of the sensitive data but not all of it. So let's give it a try. Now in Management Studio here, I've got a new database I've just created, and I'm just going to make a table in it called Sensitive Customer Data. With some very sensitive data in here, it's going to have email addresses, tax file numbers, and BSB numbers. Now, yes, the table isn't that well designed. I mean, for one thing, it doesn't have a primary key, but that's okay, it's only being used for demonstration purposes. Anyway, time to add our masking using the masked with statement. This is the syntax, and inside the string, you can put one of four function names. The first, and the easiest one, is default, because everything is automatic. Essentially, default will replace the original value of a char or varchar with four x's. It will change a date field to a nondescript date, like the 1st of January 1900, and it will set the value of a numeric field to zero. The second method, email, is far simpler, and it will convert any char or varchar to use this format first letter of original field, and then xxx at xxxx.com. But I reckon that the third method is the most interesting. It's called partial, and what it allows you to do is reveal a certain number of characters at the beginning of a string, put a padding string in the middle, and then reveal a certain number of characters at the end. Finally, the fourth method, random, simply allows you to replace the value of a numeric field with a randomly generated value between an upper and a lower bound. Whew, a lot of information, hey, but I'm going to actually demonstrate some of these. So I'm going to alter that table I created earlier. Of course, you could write the masks directly into the create table statement, but I'm just going to use an alter column. And add masked with function equals email. So add that to the email address field. For the tax file number, I think I'm going to add a partial mask to that. So I want to reveal the first character and then I want to have XXXX, that'll go in the middle, and then I want to reveal two characters at the end. For the BSB number, hmm, what should I, I think I'm going to go default. So I'm going to have add masked with function equals default. All right, so I've added the masks and we're just going to apply them and build the table. And then we've got a little bit of sample data in here, so I'll just insert that into the table as well. And now it should work, right? So I'll just select all from sensitive customer data and look at that, the data is not obfuscated at all. You wanna know why? Because I was logged in with Windows authentication with all privileges enabled. So to actually see the results of the masking, we need to create a new user with limited privileges. Just entering him in there with a very secure password, one, two, three, four. Now, in terms of privileges, I'm only going to grant select privileges to him. And then, now he's set up, I'm going to switch to my other instance of Management Studio, one which is not logged in, and log in using his username. All right, now we should be able to select all from the sensitive customer data table, and wow, what a difference. Now you can see how useful this would be if, for example, Bob was a clerical worker. He didn't need access to all this detailed information like people's bank account numbers, and if he did have them then he'd probably steal some money. But what if he changed jobs and now he needs access to the unobfuscated data? Well, we can simply grant him the unmask privilege. This can be granted like any other privilege, I can just say grant unmask to Bob Jones. But the only difference with it is, and this is a bit annoying, you can't grant it to an individual object, it's database wide. So for instance, I might like to write something like this, but that would generate an error unfortunately. But apart from that slight issue, and several others, like the fact that computed columns can't be masked, I'm sure you'll agree that dynamic data masking is an excellent feature and a good addition to SQL Server 2016. Anyway, I'm Handy Andy, and thank you very much for watching my video. If you did enjoy it, then please subscribe to my channel for more tech videos.